Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is the Global Watch International Prayer Room. Today, the hour is going to be a feedback hour on what the Lord has been saying and doing since we have been in Aaron Hoot. And um, it is September the 5th, wow, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And so, Father, we just pray this morning, thanking you and praising you that your mercy is new every morning. And Lord, I just pray even right now for your mercy to be to flood over Israel. God, we thank you and praise you that you are the guardian of Israel, Israel and your people. And we pray, Father, in the name of Yeshua, that this would be an hour that glorifies you, that edifies your people and magnifies your name. And we just bless you this morning. And um, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would drive this conversation, that you would lead us in prayer in the name of Yeshua. I don't know how many of you that are here were actually in uh, Aaron Hoot in the summit or um, watched the live videos that it was amazing. But one of the things um, that really, I would say, ministered to me in the actual meetings, they, they built as we went along, this, the presence of the Lord was so strong and the worship, the prophetic times uh, where uh, Shirley was really uh, cataloging and journaling all of the prophetic words that were coming and there was no shortage of a prophetic word at any meeting we were in because it was like the portal of heaven was open over us at all times but we had every day we went to small groups after the morning session and in those small groups um, fred would give us questions one sometimes two questions and we would break off into, I believe it was, well, anyway, it was a, a large number of groups. And we would spend anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour together where each person could actually share what the Lord was revealing to them in that morning hour and in that time where we had had a morning session. And it was so, so very powerful. So there's just certain things that took place within the meeting that um, it, I would say it actually marked my life. It marked my heart forever. And so I'm not gonna leave the call by talking the entire time. I would really like to hear from everyone, even if you weren't there physically, but you watched um, any of the summit, or if God is saying something prophetically to you in this hour. Um, so, and then I'd like to pray for Israel. Um, we can pray for our own nations, and we certainly, all of our nations are in need of a move of God's spirit in our nations. But we also want to cover Israel as she is in um that place of warring against her enemies. But God in his faithfulness is guarding her. So um, has anyone watched and been a part of Shoshana? I know that you were there. It was a pleasure to meet you in person. But anyone that would like to open your mic and share, please do. and. Um, it doesn't have to be something from Aaron Hoot or Auschwitz, but, you know, what the Lord is saying today and how we're moving forward in the prophetic today and the things that God has been revealing, you know, especially through these Global Watch calls. So, Shoshana, would you like to speak? Yes. Um, I'm not sure whether my Zoom is running because I have uh, the last day's difficulties and suddenly all the videos are going off and my voice is going off. And 
I don't know what is happening. Um, yeah, so Lord bless my <laughs> technical de devices. Um, yes, for me, it was so this time a little bit different than last time because last time I was ill. And, uh, and this time I really enjoyed the fellowship with others a lot in between the breaks and to have time in between the breaks. This was really so refreshing meeting people in person like you do. And um, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, what stood out in the, in the spirit was the, the warfare. I mean, I really said, I, I knew when I came there, I came just from Israel. Um, and I knew this time in Herrenhut is going to be a, a really warfare on highest levels. And um, so I was prepared like this. And uh, and with the banners, it was so powerful. I I didn't expect so many people to come with the banners and how God okay because they didn't know each other, but they they were dancing and using the banners in. And I was also sometimes I I'm not a banner I I don't know anything about banners, and. <laughs> But the Lord let me somehow, I was really pressured from the Holy Spirit to do things, you know. I, it was like, for me, I couldn't do anything else. So I had to do this. So, it, And um, so I was so amazed how God orchestrated all those things. And also, um, when we heard the news afterwards, what God did, and even now that there is, was no major attack on Israel, still a protection. And I mean, we can really praise him for all he's doing, even in this huge, amazing turmoils and grief we have now, we are passing through. Yes. Uh, but that we really know, I mean, there's a no, 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 knowing um that God is sitting on the throne. And um, for me to pray for Israel was um, also for the, the people coming from Israel, it was about the identity so much. And I think um, this is also on my heart very much. Uh, I mean, since last week, really to pray for the two, that God is really guiding the people of Israel in his true identity, that they really cry out to him and come in unity before him in their identity, that they get back their identity. Even the testimonies from other, from Auschwitz you, you were sharing, it was so pointing out the identity, restoring the identity of his people Absolutely. and the healing. Yeah. So, and this, the, the small groups, I like too. So it was so good to, to get to know people more deeper. Yeah. 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 So you want to pray into that oh. then you just share? Yeah, I can pray into this. Thank you. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Lord, I praise you. I praise you for this time we were went through. I thank you that you took us into your throne room, into your courts of heaven, into your your high places, really to um engage with you and that you used us also to pray according to your heart. I thank you that we could be a blessing for the nations, but as well for Israel during this time. Thank you for the fellowship we had. And thank you that you are going to bind us even more together as Global Watch um, in unity and fellowship. Lord, and I pray especially for Israel now that they may turn their eyes, their hearts to you, that they go into this deep repentance in this month of Elul, that they they really seek you like in Psalm 107, they cried out to you in all situation, even when they were hungry and thirsty, when they were desperate and in prison in darkness, and when they went on the high seas in pride, even that you draw them back into this repentance so they could cry out to you. And we pray all this this different opinions and um, things, we, we call them together to cry out to you and to bring you people 
and to this restoration of their identity, that you bring restoration in their hearts. And as we cry out to you, especially in this month of Elu, when you are the king in the field, that you yes. are restoring their identity as their husband, their bridegroom, and that their encounters over encounters in their daily lives with you, Yeshua, and the people also being a light for them, those ones who know you, that you use them as lights on the on the mountains, on the table. So they they draw to you, cry out to you, seek you, and they are not relying on any international help. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Um, this was on Monday the 12th. It was session one when um, Brandy and Alex were playing. I'll just read what I wrote and then the Lord was started saying something. The flute is taking us into a new dimension of God's heart. New ground is being opened up in us. The fellow ground has been ploughed up and the seeds have been planted. The rains of God's grace have fallen and the fruit, this harvest of God's grace has come to fruition. But now new seeds are being distributed into the prepared soil of our hearts. By his spirit, Father is breathing fresh life on those parts, the seeds in our lives. Some have remained dormant, now will be watered afresh with new nourishment and the former and latter rains giving the nourishment needed for the green shoots to sprout strongly. In the strengthening is the flourishing. The Lord has so tenderly watched over this seed. It is now sprouting and will come into full harvest. The fellow time has passed and the new planting are, plantings are encouraging the dormants to sprout forth anew. See the crops in the field coming into harvest. Come, our Lord of the harvest. Let us bring forth fruit together unto our Father's glory. Then the Lord said, Courage. Courage, my beloved ones. Let me instruct you in the way you should go. This season is short to prepare you for the season that has already opened in your hearts. Allow me to look tenderly upon you as I breathe new fire into you. For truly you are the beauty and magnificence of the work of my hands. I am enamored of you. I vanquish your fears and hesit hesitancies, it says, with my tender love. I have breathed fresh fire into you. Receive the new revelation of my love. My love is limitless and fierce that burns with unquenchable fire. The fire of my love burns in you and is flashing out and can never be put out. Then later on, he said, I am breaking up new ground, beloved. Beloved, take note of what I will do this day. The heavens are open to receive your prayers and to move on your behalf. I will stop at nothing to bring forth life, my life in Israel. And it's interesting, but very heavy rain actually started here in Queensland on the 13th of the 8th. I am taking you higher into your priestly, kingly function to stand with me in all I am as my bulwark and shield for my beloved Israel. You have already entered in, but there are many to still enter into my kingdom. As you remain faithful to all I call you to do, you will see my hand direct, shield, and guide into the fullness of what I call you to. 
reach out to my First Nations people, that reconciliation be made with one another, that my blessings be poured forth through you and my nation's people whom I have called to stand before me to receive my instruction. Many have answered my call and stand before me, but I'm calling you my people to pray and to seek relationships of trust developed in love. Through these love trust relationships, I will bring deep, deep deliverance and healing for my First Nation people and the nations I have called them to re represent before me. Mm. Do not doubt the power of resurrection. Sorry, do not doubt the power of reconciliation I will bring in your heart that will flow out your mouth, beloved. The power of my words flowing from my heart of love in you will bring down generational barriers and strongholds that stand against the entrance of my love and the light of my love shall penetrate that darkness to let in the light of the fellowship of sonship. I long to gather the nations into my arms of love. Will you say yes to my call? We seal all that in the blood, Father. Thank you. Amen. So you got that while you were um, watching the first session? Um, that last one was on the 13th of the 8th. Right. That was at 7.26 p.m. So that would be the evening session. Uh-huh. Um, and the other one was... Um, what I find it was on the I forget what I said. Well, you know, when we were there and um, there was the stunning, uh, the worship was stunning. Uh, there's just no other, it's hard to describe it because of the place that it actually took you to. When um, you could tell when the spirit of the Lord flooded the room. And that flute that you're talking about, the wind instrument of the First Nations people, there's no other sound like it. Mm. It was absolutely stunning. And so to see and to hear what the Lord was doing with the indigenous people of Israel the Israel, the sovereign is Israelis, and to um, see how he was blending the sound of the indigenous people of North America, the Native Americans. Um, it just took us to another level yeah. in the realm of worship because of that healing. It was absolutely the frequency of healing that was coming from heaven. And uh, I mean, I love Alex and Brandy's music anyway, but the way that each one would yield to the other and play by the spirit with Alyosha or with Karen, and the First Nations people, it was, it was really, really beautiful. And it set the atmosphere and the tone for what the Holy Spirit was going to do in those following hours as we would worship. It was just, I think, you know, I, I know that I am still processing a lot of things and I can hear a song and it will be a catalyst to put me right back in that place and um or hear one of the calls these last few days of having the calls with uh sarah delling or tess davis and you know different ones that were sharing deeply in the younger generation what god is doing in the younger generation is so so encouraging and it was just you know when I know the Lord had spoke to Sue 
can't get into the place behind me. I'm sorry. Um, and was talking about that this was going to be no the um tissue. That this would be a different kind of summit than we've ever experienced. It was my first one being actually there live, but I have watched the others um, as they live stream. And this was like an overflow of God's love being poured out on the people every, absolutely every session. And just really and truly imparting his heart to where there was such a unity and a oneness. And I remember at one point sitting in the worship time and it was actually children that were leading the worship. And just feeling the delight of the heart of God that we had children and then we had uh, the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the Lord, uh, just the, it was like the kiss of heaven was on these meetings. And when the children would stand and lead in boldness or the little tiny ones would not be led by an adult to come up and make a circle and dance and they would just enter into the presence of the Lord. I was just, I think I cried a river of tears out of the goodness of the Lord and his profound presence. And so I understand exactly what you're saying, Mary <laughs> and Shoshana. And, you know, it's like, oh, Lord, you know, and Sue said, I just really, you know, many of us did get, uh, hit with sickness before we left, but it was a time actually, even in that time of infirmity, and I believe it's in uh, Romans chapter eight, that it says that the light afflictions, when we consider the light afflictions and light of the glory to come. And I thought, we have been in glory. We have been in the presence of the one who is glory himself. And so the afflictions that we had was for myself was a time to just really be slow and be still and hear him. And some of the things that were taught or that we discussed in small groups became such a living reality. So, so blessed. Anyone else, please open your mic and you can either share or pray. Before we end the call, I'm going to play the a, a song by Alex and Brandy called Great Chief Mountain. And I don't know if you were there and you remember the one banner that came out, the flag. And it was of the mountain of the Lord with the lightning coming off that mountain on this banner. I don't know how they did. I actually tried to buy it, <laughs> but it was not for sale. But it was absolutely stunning. And it was the picture of when the children of Israel met God at that mountain. And he made his voice known. And to me, that's what these meetings were like in such another level. I mean, we all, you know, any of us that have walked with him and we talk with him and we know his voice, but this was something so uniquely special. And if you haven't been able to watch these meetings, they are available. It's called Until 2024 and it's on, they are on YouTube and they are on the uh, channel that has been posted for the global watch. So I would encourage you, we're watching them ourselves again. And it's amazing. I can you I thought, oh, I won't cry this time. <laughs> no, his presence brings me to tears in the worship and that Wednesday morning worship. Oh my goodness. 
you know, so each one, I mean, you could just say something about every single meeting. There was just, it was so packed with the power of God and the presence of God. So, um, I would like to, myself, I'll pray over um, those that are in Israel, and then I would like somebody else to open your mic. Out of Psalm 84, the pilgrim road to Adonai's courts. How lovely are your tabernacles, Adonai, Sebaot. My soul yearns and even faints for the courts of Adonai. My heart and my flesh are singing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young near your altars. Adonai Sebaot, my king and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house for they are ever praising you. Selah. And blessed is the one whose strength is in you and in whose heart is the pilgrim roads passing through the valley of Baca. They make it a spring. The valley of Baca is the valley of tears. And so, Father, we know that many right now are in that place, Lord, of the valley of tears as they are in mourning in Israel as they feel the devastation of what took place with our six hostages. And what is a continuum right now, Lord, where the nations are rising up against your nation and literally they're rising up against you. So I pray, Father, that you would strengthen the arms of those, Lord God, who carry the heart of Israel and who carry your heart for your people and your land. And I pray, Father, that you would just fortify them. God, fortify them with your righteous right arm. And Father, we pray in the name of Yeshua for those that are grieving and mourning in Zion. Lord, we grieve with those that grieve. We mourn with those that mourn. But Father, I thank you for the, the testimonies of salvation that even in the midst of the pain and the sorrow, there is testimonies, God, of your faithfulness to reveal yourself to your people and to bring them into your kingdom. And so, Father, we pray that you would not only comfort those who are mourning and grieving in Zion, but Lord, that you would release a spirit of supplication and repentance and I pray, Father, that as they come together, even at the wall, that you would take them into the deepest repentance they've ever known, that they would identify, oh God, with repentance according to your word. And Lord, that you would give encounters of the God kind through this time, Lord, as they prepare their hearts for the coming high holidays in Israel. And we just thank you and praise you, Father, for watching over those that are still alive, uh, that are in captivity. And I'm so thankful, Father, that you come to set the captives free. And so, Lord, we pray that they would experience true freedom, which is freedom in you, freedom to know you, freedom to come into your kingdom, even before they have the freedom to come back home. And we, we pray for their protection. And I do pray that you would flush out Sinbar right into the hands of the IDF soldiers. And we pray protection for them today in the name of Yeshua. Amen. I'll share something, if that's okay. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. It's great. <laughs> so um, I am not usually seen on... Um, I usually am always on the watch at five in the morning and um, during the until time live, I was watching our um, four-year-old grandson in Boise, Idaho, but I had a chance after that to go back and listen. And I think uh, Jenny's message about the orphan spirit touched my heart 
um, my husband, uh, who now resides in Idaho, he doesn't live here in Washington. Um, he was from a missionary background, is from a missionary background, and his father, their name in a sense is known around the globe um, in the missionary field. They grew up in Indonesia. And um, Peter just to this day, and Peter is 72 years old, uh, just wrestles so much with his dad who would be away from their home, which was the jungles of Indonesia, which was where there was tigers. And, um, you know, I can't imagine growing up like that. But, um, you know, his dad would be one way, but then when he came home, he would be a totally different way and be verbally abusive, physically abusive. And I think my husband lives with lots of shame. He was the oldest son. There's six in his family. So that was just very significant to me. Um, and, you know, all the messages, all the worship, very significant. But then also these young ladies from, you know, I don't know specifically where they live, but I was um, raised in New York City. And uh, I I've just been touched by all that happened. Um, you know, when they shared yesterday, when they went and visited the concentration camp, um, and then what they have planned, what Sarah has planned for, I think it's September 27th. You know, it just warms my heart. Um, so I'll just pray into those two things. And um, Father, I just thank you so much for this group, how this has just provided a stability in my life as our family has just gone through so many changes. Uh, daughter lives in Sweden, son lives in Boise, Idaho, and um, husband lives in Idaho somewhere as well. Um, yeah, it's just, you're the solid rock, regardless of what happens externally. And I have so much to be thankful for, but I started on this journey with global prayer. Um, it was January of 2021. So we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you how you provide fellowship. Um, I feel like I have fellowship here, but it's mainly with those that I work with. And I recently just started going back to um, a local fellowship as well. Um, so we just pray for those who, and I pray for Peter, and there's so many others. I was at a, a teaching the other day where the principal of a particular school also talked about how he, um, you know, he didn't use the same terminology, but his father was very abusive. So we pray, I just pray that those without fathers can sense your unconditional love and how you've created them for a purpose and that there's a plan and we just know that your love casts out fear, casts out shame, that your love, only your love is perfect love. And also just for these events that will take place and there's all sorts of events. There's Norway, uh, you know, there's whatever each of us on the phone have ordained by you today in our lives, but, um, just because my heart is so much in New York, our daughter lived there and worked there with her husband for, oh, they were there for 10 years or something recently before they moved to Sweden. Uh, just pray a pour outpouring of the, well, I just, I thank you that the altar is going to be set up in Times Square. And Emily, our daughter, worked for Microsoft in Microsoft's office, unless there's been a change is right there at Times Square. And thank you that when there's worship going on, lives will be changed. And I remember being in New York City the summer after 9-11 and how I was on a mission and Emily was on a mission and we prayed for people. We just walked up to them on the street and said, can we pray for you? And people weren't didn't reject us. 
Yes, we just poured your spirit into the city. And that was way back in um, the day of, well, 9-11, 2002. So it's 2024 now, and um, you are doing a great work. And we thank you for that. And I just thank you so much for each person on the call. And may they sense your presence and working um, and peace and rest that passes the understanding of anything that's going on, the sorrow in Israel, the sorrow that is part of life. Thank you that you are present in our sorrows. So just commit these prayers to you in Jesus name, amen. So that wasn't one where he played the flute actually, but it's one of their, that's their latest uh, CD. And it is so powerful, the invitation. I feel like we were all invited by the Lord to come up higher and higher we did go. <laughs> so, and even Diane, you're talking about the message that Jenny Haggard shared. It was so, so moving. Um, I had no idea that I ha had a daughter that was here that was watching live that evening and she was sending me messages and i wasn't actually getting them because of the way that the my phones were set up but when i got home and i had seen it you know what a blessing that jenny's message had been for her and some members of her family it was just really really precious and it was a absolute powerful powerful message it also puts in perspective you know um i think our love for the lord and where um like you said how that um in the midst of it all you know the most important the absolutely most important thing is to keep our focus on him and the restoration and reconciliation and all the things that we'd all love to see, you know, just hang on because he's not finished. <laughs> so, amen. I'm looking at Psalm 60, verse 14. The sons of those who afflicted you will come bowing to you. And all those who despised you will fall at the soles of your feet. They will call you the city of Adonai, Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Father, we thank you and praise you that a birthing is taking place, that your redemptive plan is being worked out. You are God against all odds. And even as many spectacular things had happened in times past, we so pray in Yeshua's name in unity that you would bring into fruition, Lord, heaven touching earth, your light pervading the darkness. We're crying out, we're living out life and life more abundantly, which is in you, Messiah, Yeshua. And yet, Lord, the pressing in, the uh, what's amounting to literal anguish, Lord, we just acknowledge that there are the varied times and seasons, even as according to Ecclesiastes, three, five, and six, how that there are the varied ways of yours that are beyond our reasonable, logical thought processes. And I so pray in Yeshua's name that you would let there be testimonies as to the validity of your faithfulness, for that is who you are, ever faithful, lover of our souls. We thank you and praise you, Yeshua, salvation. We thank you, Lord, even for how that we could learn so much, Lord. You would feed us from uh, rich tables as it were and allow us to drink from deep wells. And where that the many of our brothers and sisters in Messiah, Lord, are uh, we're all getting to know one another more and more. And we can behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to drink and sisters to dwell together in true unity. And Lord, we thank you that there is coming about not just your army, but your family, the body of Messiah, 
And so we rejoice in you, Yeshua, and we're that the term Hatzalah, Lord, is life. Lord, Yeshua, you are salvation, and we're that the way that the Hebraic aspects are brought into view, Lord, where that your language, as it were, is such richness. We thank you and praise you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, Yeshua, and that you, Holy Spirit of God, are so active in this day, and we look to you, Ruach, that you would blow like the wind indeed and continue to flow like that river, that river of life, and let us see Lord, your word brought into fruition. Your word will not pass away, but it's ever living. And thank you and praise you for that measure of emunah, that measure of faith, that measure of trust that you've deposited within us to see that we um, are your witnesses in Yeshua's name. So if you haven't opened your mic and spoke or prayed or shared, please do. Um, this song? Just, oh, Lena, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, Bill, what was the song you just read? Mm. Excuse Which me? Psalm, Psalm 60, verse 14. It's a lengthy verse. But, uh, thank you. It's um, good. Um, that is the Messianic Bible, the Tree of Life version. I know there are, are variances as to English and um, Messianic, but Tree of Life version is verse 14 of Psalm 60. Yeah, it was, I guess, meaningful because of um, how enemies return or come back to Zion. Um, um, I... Um, I haven't listened even, I haven't caught up on all the sessions, but I did watch the, or listen to the, um, the session with Deb Hoggs, am I saying the name correctly? And when, um, you know, when you guys did the salt covenant and each nation would bring in the salt, it was just so powerful that I'm, I'm listening and, and, you know, multitasking. And yet it was, I was in tears, so like, cause I was, it was kind of like the weight of it, the significance of it. And I think sometimes um, for, sometimes I, I feel like we don't realize how powerful, even like a simple prayer, but yet how powerful it is because of who we are, because, because we are a global body, because there's unity. And because we have like um, we have roles and functions in heaven, you know, like we're before the throne of God, uh, praying something. And I know for me, and so I just assume it's the same for many of us that we don't realize like who we are and the the power of coming before Almighty God. And not just we come before him, but that we have a role, we have a function, like like generals in an army, like, anyway, so, I just, um, yeah, that was really powerful, and, um, and even now, like, I'm, like, convicted, like, no, 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 like, because I'm thinking one day the Arabs and Jews are going to be the one new man, and I'm, like, no, 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 there is a one human already. You know, there is, uh, whether it's a remnant or it's the majority, for God in his sight, there is a one human from um, the nations um, uh, with one heart united in one voice before the throne. And I just think it's so powerful. But, um, um, like, <clears throat> The <clears throat> the native watch that happened recently, um, um, so um, so we're we're talking about like a prophetic message. One thing I feel like it's I'm hearing is like the house of God, like like God is wanting, uh, or there's a focus or a, a 
<clears throat> on the house of God. Maybe maybe uh, the Lord is causing our attention to come back. I know it is for me, and I'm so I am hearing it like from different groups. It comes up I'm like, okay, God, you are. This is a, a putting a, a light on um, the rebuilding of the house of God. Like our focus, like to pray for healing and. Uh, the house of God, and then um, yeah, with the Native Watch um, recently, um, and uh, and I want to pray into really a reconciliation efforts between Armenian and Azeri. There is like an undercover something happening um, that I want to pray into, and and what I want to pray into is this that. Um, Sometimes, and I'm guessing this happens, I don't know how it is in Israel with the the gatherings of Arabs and Jews, but sometimes in my mind, it's like, I want to love my enemies, I need to forgive them, let's come back together and as a body of Christ, no offenses, but it's more than that, right? Because I'm I'm coming into a realization that um, I don't need my enemies to confess and for me to forgive them and all that, but I think for the sake, I don't know, but I'm, anyway, I'm at a place where I'm thinking that there has to be, um, and I heard the Balkans do this, and I was like, really? Like, how do you do that? Where there is an actual um, sharing of, or or a, or an addressing becoming some correction happening versus I'm just going to forgive what happened and move on. That there is, a, there is a need to bring into the open, this was wrong, right? Um, anyway, so I just want to quickly pray into that. Father, we thank you for the reconciliation work that you are doing between Jews and Arabs, between Turks and Armenians and Kurds and Armenians, and even Azeris and Armenians. Father, we I pray for uh, these meetings that are being planned. You know of them. And I pray during this time that trust is established, that there is an agreement to have an open conversation for the offenses of the hearts to be like, uh, we just speak peace to the offenses. We speak peace to the emotional Roller coaster, sort of, that that um, the heart would remain at peace, and 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 while there is an open conversation, Father, we pray for open conversations that are covered by you, Holy Spirit. Open conversations that would bring things to the open, that would bring truth to the open. Um, I think that's what you want. I think you want hearts to be open and to um, um, to come into true unity, not to cover up and move on and choose to forgive, but that there is also truth that brought into the open, that there is a true acknowledgement of one another, a true acknowledgement of how we each reflect your image, and, and a coming together, a true coming together. We bless what you're doing, Father. Um, and we thank you for the reconciliation of nations. And we're coming to the top of the hour, and I'm going to be turning the host over to Rainy for the India Watch. Thank you, everyone who's been on this call and who's participated. It's been wonderful. And you're welcome to stay on the call, Randy. I'm going to turn this to you.